Not much at all is known about Fox Space's life before the games. We know that she was 14 years old in the film, and that she participated in the same games as Katniss Everdeen and Peter Malark. She held from District 5, the Power District. Fandom Tree here, and today we are jumping into the world of the Hunger Games to talk about one of my favorite tributes of all time, a girl called Foxface. As always, if you enjoy this type of content, then consider subscribing as I post new uploads regularly. This video also contains major spoilers for the Hunger Games, so fair warning. Foxface was described as appearing sly and sneaky, having a face that Cadmus deems fox-like. Smaller than many of the other tributes, she weighed 115 pounds and was 5'5". Five five. She had sleek red hair and amber-colored eyes, but in the film, they are green. During the District 5 reapings, Cadmus takes note of Foxface, who was reaped alongside the male tribute for her district. It is unknown whether or not Foxface volunteered to be in the Hunger Games, or if she was simply chosen at random. It is, however, unlikely that she had her name added into the Reaping Bowl extra times in exchange for Tesserae, since District 5 is actually one of Pan Am's wealthier districts. She likely may not have volunteered, though, as she seemed afraid during the beginning of her games. During the Tribute Parade, Foxface can be seen riding in the District 5 chariot alongside the male tribute from her district. They wave nervously out at the crowd. They are dressed in shiny silver outfits meant to represent her district's main export, which is power that they provide to the capital. During the tribute training sessions, Foxface tests her knowledge of being able to recognize matching plant leaves at one of the training stations. She does this extremely fast, illustrating her intelligence. For her training score, she is shown receiving a 5 in the film, which is a very average score. She likely wasn't able to prove to the game makers what talent she could use in the arena, or she was using a strategy to seem mediocre and weak to the other tributes. When it came time for the televised tribute interviews with Caesar Flickerman, Foxface wore a ruffled blue dress with matching turquoise makeup and had small rhinestones around her eyes. In the book, Foxface's interview isn't shared. Katniss simply states that Foxface seemed sly and elusive. In the film, Foxface shares a few things during her interview. Foxface says, I find that if I can apply myself to the situation present, I will be able to figure it out. She also informs Caesar that some people like to call her Foxface. She says that her special skill is that she is very smart and that she believes that no weapons can match a brain. She comes off composed and intelligent. At the end of her interview in the film, Caesar Flickerman thanks her, but in both the Brazilian and Italian versions of the film, he calls her by the name Finch. Some people speculate that this is her real name, as the name Foxface was just a nickname Katniss gave her. On the way to the arena, the tributes ride in the hovercraft, looking solemn and sad. We see Foxface wince as a tracker is inserted into her arm. During the countdown to the start of the games in the arena, while the tributes are waiting in a circle, Foxface is on a pedestal beside Katniss. She glances around her, looking at the other tributes. When the gong sounds, she runs away from the cornucopia and ends up surviving the bloodbath but is at a major disadvantage as she has to begin her games without weapons or supplies. While running in the woods, Foxface ends up bumping into Katniss Everdeen, who is also running from the bloodbath at the cornucopia. They knock into each other and both fall on the ground. They look at one another for a moment, and then they both frantically scramble away from each other with scared expressions on their faces. They run in opposite directions. At the end of the first day in the arena, the Fallen are shown in the sky, and Katniss notes that Foxface survived the beginning of the games, and that she is one of the remaining tributes. Later on, Katniss teams up with Rue, and they sit together and discuss which tributes are still alive. They can recall all of them, except for the last tribute, who is someone that neither of them can remember. This last person is Foxface. This further illustrates how Foxface is able to stay off of everyone's radar by being inconspicuous. Katniss is hiding in the foliage, trying to figure out how to destroy the career's pyramid of supplies when she sees Foxface emerge from the woods, creeping out onto the plane. Foxface decides that the coast is clear and that it's safe to make a move, and then she runs for the pyramid with quick, small steps. As she reaches the pyramid, she searches the ground, taking care to only step on certain spots, since the pyramid is protected by landmines, placed there by the male tribute from District 3. She comes closer and closer to the pyramid with strange little hops, sometimes landing on one foot, teetering slightly, and sometimes risking a few steps. 
At one point, she even jumps in the air over a small barrel and lands poised on her tiptoes. Unfortunately, she has too much momentum when she lands and it throws her forward onto the ground. She gives a sharp squeal when she hits the ground, but nothing happens. Foxface gets up and continues making her way towards the supplies. Foxface fills her pack with a few items from a variety of containers, as well as a few apples and a handful of crackers. She takes a bit of each thing, but not enough to rouse suspicion or to tip off that someone is taking food. She makes her way hopping through the mines again, before scampering into the woods again, safe and sound. She does all of this without being detected by the boy from District 3, the one left in charge of guarding the supply pyramid while their careers are away. Cadness calls Foxface Wily for being able to discover a path to the career's food and for being able to replicate it so neatly. Cadness ends up blowing up the career supply pyramid sky high and ends up injured and hiding in some bushes on the edge of the career's camp. Sometime later, she overhears Foxface laughing in the distance. Foxface is standing in the rubble of the pyramid, laughing to herself. She scavenges through what's left, finding things in the ashes that the careers overlooked, including a metal pot and a knife blade. Katniss guesses that the reason Foxface is amused is because now that the career stuff is eliminated, she might actually stand a chance in the games. Katniss briefly considers revealing herself to Foxface, and even considers enlisting her as a second ally against the career pack. She decides against it because Foxface's sly grin makes Katniss feel like Foxface would stab her in the back. Katniss thinks it would be an excellent idea to shoot her, but then Foxface hears something coming from the direction of the fields, and then sprints for the woods. Foxface grew alarmed when she heard a sound coming from that area that lies across from the woods, and Katniss is certain that the person Foxface ran from was Thresh, as that was his domain. Katniss also states that Foxface operates alone and at night, and that her strategy has been to evade, not attack. That even if Foxface knew where she was, that the most she would do is hope that someone else would kill Katniss. The surviving tributes of each district are invited to the cornucopia for what is called a feast, which is where the tributes are able to get the thing they each need desperately. At dawn, the ground before the mouth of the cornucopia splits open, and a round table with a white tablecloth rises from below. There are four backpacks on the table, two large black ones with the numbers 2 and 11, a tiny orange one for District 12, and the backpack for Foxface, a medium-sized green one with the number 5 on it. The table clicks into place, but before any other tribute can assess the situation, Foxface darts out of the cornucopia, snags the green backpack, and speeds off. She disappears into the trees, away from the cornucopia. Foxface comes up with a crafty plan of hiding inside of the cornucopia, immediately grabbing her backpack, and running away. She leaves everyone else's backpacks alone, knowing, or at least hoping, that no one else will pursue her while their backpack is still sitting vulnerable on the table. Candace calls her plan clever and risky, and feels surprise, admiration, anger, jealousy, frustration, and other things as she sees Foxface disappear with her backpack into the wooded area and well out of shooting range. She states that maybe Foxface is the real opponent here. We don't know what it is that Foxface desperately needed. It could have been food, water, a blanket, or even something else entirely. We can only assume at this point that she was lacking for something, an item possibly crucial to her long-term survival in the games. The next question we ask is where did she run to once she had her backpack? The book never mentions where Foxface hid during the games, and the closest we get to information is an offhand comment that Katniss makes to Peta about Foxface being in her den somewhere. What we can assume, however, is that Foxface's hiding spot was likely close to the cornucopia since she'd had a clear enough view of the career camp as she was able to observe them using or even creating the safe path through the mines to the supply pyramid. So she couldn't have been too far. Rue, from way up in the trees, had also seen the career's camp, but hadn't seen Foxface, so Foxface was likely well hidden somewhere in the wooded area surrounding the open plain where the games first began. It begins to rain heavily in the arena. The game makers have created a deluge, as if they are intent on washing everyone away. The rain is so bad that you wouldn't be able to see three feet in front of you, and the thunder is so powerful it seems to shake the ground. The storm lasts for two days. The next day, Katniss and Peter are out foraging when she notices some of their cheese is missing. She blames Peter, but he says it wasn't him and that he'd been down by the stream collecting berries. 
Candace realizes Peter's berries are actually Nightlock, a poisonous plant. The cannon fires, signaling a tribute death. Candace thinks it's Peter who has died, but he is actually safe. About a hundred yards or so away, a hovercraft lifts what's left of Foxface's emaciated body into the air. Candace sees the red glint of Foxface's hair in the sunlight, and realizes that she should have known Foxface was the one who took some of their cheese, since she'd seen her use this tactic before. In the film, they find Foxface lying on the ground, dead with nylock berries in her hand. Peter states that he didn't even know Foxface was following him. They go on to say that she was clever, but maybe too clever. At first, Peter thinks that it was Cato who killed Foxface, until Katniss tells him that it was his berries that Foxface ate, and that her kill was his. She says that Foxface is very clever, or that she was, until Peter outfoxed her. He didn't kill her on purpose, but they save a few of the berries in case they can fool Cato, since even Foxface was fooled. That same night, they see Foxface's picture shine in the sky and then disappear from the world forever. Candace suspects Peter feels bad for being the cause of her death, even if it was necessary. Candace thinks about Foxface for a moment and admires her. She imagines that if the tributes were given a test, that Foxface would have been the smartest of all of them, that Peter's ignorance had brought her down, and that if they had intentionally tried to trick her, then she would have sensed it and avoided the berries. Foxface was emaciated from not getting enough to eat, and since the career's food supply was blown up by Katniss, she had no one to steal food from. After two days of rain, where foraging would have been impossible, she sneaks up and eats some of Peta and Katniss's cheese, as well as some of the berries that Peta had been collecting. After eating the poisonous berries, she dies. Some people have speculated that Foxface ate the berries on purpose to end her own life, while others say that she ate them not knowing they were poisonous. One big argument made is that she must have known they were Nightlock because in the film during training, we see her at a station relating to plants, matching pictures of plants to each other extremely quickly. She is never shown actually learning about plants or their properties though. She is only seen matching silhouettes of plant leaves quickly, but nothing more. In the book, Katniss even states that the Nightlock berries don't match any of the berries that they were learning about in training. I think that she likely did not want to die seeing as how she fought to stay alive throughout the games, still trying to survive by seeking food right up until the very end. Everyone has their own opinions on this, and since it's been left ambiguous, there is no way of really knowing the truth. It seems Foxface was afraid of confronting any of the other tributes and played her games passively, relying on stealth and strategy. This tribute was cunning and probably underestimated by her fellow tributes. She took calculated risks and made it to late game, getting there without killing or hurting anyone else, since she favored wit over weapons. She is not known to have any kills, and she comes in fourth place out of 24 tributes. In the film, she comes in fifth place, dying before Thresh, unlike in the books, where he dies before her. When Katniss and Peter are being chased by the wolf mutts, she sees one that is based on Foxface's DNA, with red fur and amber eyes, but we don't know if this mutt in particular survived. Foxface was a memorable and clever tribute. Smart and in control, Kenneth even says that it would be easier to catch Cato than her. What is your opinion on this District 5 tribute? Do you think she should have won? Do you think she ate the poisonous berries on purpose? And do you think Kenneth should have led Foxface into the alliance with her and Rue? Tell me what you think, I'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, then drop a like, and if you'd like to see more content like this, then subscribe to a fandom tree and hit the little bell icon to be notified of all future uploads as I post new uploads regularly. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.